hello. Um, now we have our character into Substance Banner. Um, the first thing I do, well, once we've gone through and uh, baked uh, those maps there, uh, we need to add a... I like to add uh, the color ID to them all. Um, there may be a better way to do this by you know, selecting by vertices and so forth, but it's easy enough for me to uh, just do it with uh, color ID. Now, on each of these layers, you can just delete the um, layer that comes in there by default. I've set up a color ID um, base uh, smart material. It allows me to just go through and uh, create the color ID's. I'll work on that singly. Um, now I'll quickly go over how to add those. Uh, I'll just create that there. So uh, let's start off with a folder. And uh, we also want to just start off with, um, um, I think they're just uh, fill layers. So to start off with a, just add a layer. Um, we'll do that in the folder and put that in the folder. Um, create this one as a black. Now with the black one, you don't need a mask on it. So just, uh, so what we want to do is Um, actually, delete that, um, we want to create a fill layer, not a normal layer, so that fill layer, uh, and then change that fill layer to the color you want, it's going to be a black fill layer, and then just rename that black, um, and the red, green, blue. Um, I've tried to separate these into how they show in uh, Character Creator because it makes it easier for me uh, when you use the PBR substances, uh, the three colors, uh, the black, red, green, um, the five colors add the blue and the cyan, and the other two add the yellow and the magenta. So we're going to go through and we can just uh, duplicate this layer a few times. Duplicate, duplicate. We don't need to do all of them, so let's do a red. And we just need to change that color to red. And then in that, uh, we will add a black mask. From that mask, you can now, um, when we go to the paint, uh, when all these ones here are off, we can you know, change that color to red. Um, so now if we have a black, the next one's going to be green. And uh, give that the color of green. Um, you may want to just uh, go through and find the actual color codes for them. But just give it the green green color. It should match it um match it pretty well. So that's your green. Um well let's um see if I can just find the color codes. So, um, I've just gone through and green is uh, RGB 0, uh, 128, and 0. So if we go to the uh, color here, we can select uh, 0, and then um, So what we do here then is, is this one here. So we go zero there, 
and the green you want uh, to be full one. So that's your green. Um, and for blue, um, you should be able to just fill in the the blue. For the other colours, just go find the code you need to, or make it the. So we want this one to possibly be you know, cyan, which is a lighter blue. So if we go to uh, one for the blue, uh, the cyan's down here. So that'll be your cyan, and then magenta would be up here. So with them done, um, turn them off, and you've added the. Um, add a black mask to them. With that black mask added, uh, in your tab on the left side, uh, if you've got the set out the same way, um, just find your uh, polygon fill. And from that polygon fill, we've got um, in the properties section, uh, we can, uh, let's, uh, let's take that, okay. So, um, minus will subtract, plus will add. Um, if we add the uh, UV chunk fill, that will fill the whole layer. So, and then that will reverse the whole layer. Um, if we use the mesh fill, it will fill the whole layer there too. Um, now this one here is the polygon fill, and it will just fill the polygon that you select. So you could have um, color maps like that with checkers in it if you want to. Um, and just to remove all of them that or the other way uh, this fill mode is the um, is the triangle fill if you have triangles it will it will fill the triangles uh, also when when you have squares they are indeed actual triangles uh, so you'll be able to fill your mesh like that um, so that's how I'll be doing doing this so it's best to create a create them, I'll call it your color uh, ID, and then once that folder is saved, you, well once that folder is created, you can now, uh, if you right click on it, um, go to create your smart material, it will create your smart material in there for you, um, so then you'll be able to use your color ID always, as I've just, um, uh, just drag color ID on and up, and then I just go through and make sure that doesn't have anything. Um, I like my my belts to be green. Um, and uh, for now, that that buckle can be red. Let's make sure we get all the, the stuff filled. Um, and we will use that as base. Um, I'm going to go through and skip all the rest of them. Um, but once you've done that and go, go through your own models, um, I'll fast forward through the uh, rest of the stuff that I do. Uh, also, if you want to add your symmetry, add your symmetry uh, here. Um, you just want to symmetry the X, so that should, uh, if I click on this one, I should do the other side too. Uh, normally there was a line there, but maybe I updated and it doesn't show the line anymore. Um, oh, there we go, show the plane. So that will show you your, your plane there for where your, you are doing the symmetry.
Okay, we have them um, mapped out now. Um, I haven't done the the character one because, like I said, we're just going to get rid of the character after and that didn't. Um, what's there? Let's uh, just remove his just all his maps there because we don't need them. But for reference, let's um, let's just add some sort of skin texture in there. Yeah, that'll do. That does not really matter and just. Let's move that out a bit. There we go. Now we've got a skin looking character. Um, you can change the color of your skin to whatever you really want it to be. Also, if you need it for display purposes. But for now, let's, uh, let's just leave it on the generic one. That, that's fine for use doesn't matter who's wearing the clothing. I just need to get a representation of where everything's sitting. Okay, um, alright, so now we've got all those um, color IDs. We're going to um, go and uh, export uh, the textures. Um, now, while exporting these textures, I want to create the in the template. Um, I want to create a folder called textures, um, and all those other folders we're going to just add into models folder. I can't drag all of them at once because I've got this folder open, but um, just add all your folders into the, the models folder, we'll find them later. And there you go. Now we've got the textures folder. Um, your output directory, or your output template, um, I've created an, an iClone one. Um, this, I've followed a tutorial somewhere, I can't remember where, if I can find that tutorial I'll add that in. Um, but basically what you want to do is, if you look at the outplate templates, um, I'll have you a quick look at, there, there's my iClone ones. Um, set up the iClone as exactly the same as this, you don't need the emissive one on there, That's it's, but it's fine if you have it there. Also iClone with opacity maps. Um, so we've got the iClone, which will bring out your base color, normal, roughness, metallic, emissive. Um, they're the ones that we need to go into iClone. Uh, the iClone AO brings out uh, that. Just make that one as well. Um, I'll bring out a few different uh, texture sets afterwards. Um, the main thing you will need though right now is the texture set. I have it set to this um, RGB. Uh, and set your texture set name uh, ID, so it will come out as color ID, um, iClone color ID. Um, now we've got one with just our mesh maps, where I will, this is only if you're wanting to put things into uh, CC3 uh, appearance editor by default. Um, I will allow people to edit through uh, character credit editor. Uh, we'll, I'll go over that uh, later in a different tutorial. Um, now I've also got a normal maps for just bringing out my uh, stitches. Um, that without actual, without the clothing normals on there. Um, this is also only for uh, if you're doing it in uh, through appearance editor, but we're not going to do it that way. So the main things you will need to know are right now iClone color ID. So pause it, set yourself up exactly the same as this, which is just a, a base color, but it's color ID, and then your iClone, um, your base color emissive uh, metallic and roughness uh, with a normal open GL, uh, and have those set to those those names too if you wish. Um, so now we can just go through and I'm going to select all of them except for the APOs. Um, all the rest here is fine, you don't need anything else, so it's going to be my folder Templar. I'm exporting the uh, t the Apple template as uh, iClone Color ID and I'm just going to hit export.
Um, now we've exported that uh, open your directory folder and we now have all of the uh, the color eddies. So from here, um, well I'm, I'm just, just dragging it over to the other, the other page so it's easier for me to do. Um, grab your cancel that one. Um, so if you grab a one of those IDs and just drag it into your your shelf here and add it onto texture and then add it to your project template. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import all of them at once. And if you uh, click left click on the top one and then shift left click down the bottom, we can now uh, change these to all texture, it grabs all of them, and uh, add it to project template and import all of those in. Uh, now we have our maps, we want to go to the belt, add the belt into ID map. Uh, now you can turn off the color map. Uh, boots into the ID map and you can turn off the color map. Chain mouse shirt into there and turn off your color map. Gloves into the ID map and turn off your color up there. Helmet into helmet. Turn off your color ID. Uh, shoulder arm into the ID and turn off. Uh, template robe in and turn off. Trousers in and turn off. Now what this will do is allow us to um, add in some textures. So we're going to add all these base textures in and just start getting this done. Now I'm just going to show you with the how this works with the belt. So we're going to grab a material. I want a leather material. I've already downloaded a few from um, Substance Source and Substance Share, which I will demonstrate in a minute or maybe next episode. So I want, I want some type of leather. I'm thinking maybe let's see how that looks. So drag the leather on. Um, when you bring them into, they're always going to be too small. So you need to increase the size you want it to. Yeah, that's too... I don't like that leather. Um, a leather that I do like, I believe I got it from Substance uh, Share, which is uh, a free repository. Them. So the leather is um, just this uh, stylized leather here. Um, also, leave the leave the ID there because we may need to make changes to the color ID later. So it's always good just to leave it there and just, just untick it. Um, so now we've got this uh, stylized leather. It comes out and it looks alright. There's no not really much butt maps going on there, but it looks pretty good. Um, well, the other thing I like doing is with the leather. Um, Grab this leather damaged and just add it in. But we're going to add it in right at the bottom of uh, this texture set, like underneath the base. So it's going to just uh, show us the uh, the leather pattern, which I want to make the scales like there. So that's gone in and giving us a bit of that, that bump in look, look to the leather there. Um, the other one is the damages, I think. So let's, uh, we can also turn the damages um, down a bit uh, here. So you can just blow them out a bit. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, um, now that we have our leather, you can see that the leather has now has just jumped on there and gone on to the the buckle as well. Um, no, we don't want it to do that. We only want it on this this section here. The reason why we set up those color IDs was to 
be able to do this. So if you right click on it, add a mask with color selection, and then you grab the color selection here and pick the green. Now that will show only on your um, the the leather belt bit where we selected that that color was green. And for the belt buckle, uh, let's see if we can find a metal material. Um, steel rough should be fine. So we add the steel rough one. It's going to go over all of it um, and just add a mask with color selection and add that to the red layer. So now that just goes onto the red layer there. Now we're going to add add in more more details to these later. This is just giving us our base substances to work for, work from. Um, I'm definitely going to add in some stitches. Uh, the stitches I do through Substance Painter here, and I've uh, found a nice little stitch tool, and uh, I'll send you the link of that. I believe it's paid, but I only paid about um, three three dollars or four dollars for it. So um, it's very handy. Or I can also show you how to do stitches uh, for free. Um, by using uh, a few separate methods. But this stitch tool is just so much easier and I prefer it that way. Um, so now we have that done. That That's how you go through and you add now your clothing to your bases to it. Um, I'm going to leave the tutorial here for now and I'm going to add a tutorial well let's uh, let's save this first let's make sure we have it saved as our template um, you may want to go through and start saving different backups uh, at separate points and um, then that way if something fails something dramatically drastically happens you've always got a separate one to go back to as well uh, always save 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 and then back up your saves because um, yeah Hardware failure, um, it's, it's, it's just socks. Right, um, now we have that belt done, like I said, uh, I'll leave this side video here, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, I'll just be explaining um, where to, the best way to get uh, all your um, substances from. See you guys.